All right, what's going on guys? How's it going? Welcome back to the Mandalorian season three reaction videos. Today, we are already back for chapter 21, I believe. And I have heard that this is the worst episode of the, oh, it's 22, of the entire series. Chapter 22 is the worst episode of the entire series after a pretty strong chapter 21. So, <laughs> listen, I love Bryce Dallas Howard, Dave Filoni, John Favreau, the people who work on these shows are incredible. They're so talented, I've seen it up close. They are all just outstanding people that develop these TV shows for the Disney Plus platform. It's just, um, listen, I, did take a little peek, got a little sense of what the episode might be about. Uh, saw that Jack Black and Doc Brown are in it. I don't, I don't know what we're in for here, but I'm worried about a pretty bad deviation from the story. I think we'll still have the Bo-Katan stuff and maybe a bit of Din Djarin too and everything, and that's fine. I don't want to talk too long here, but even with a serialized series like The Mandalorian or what have you, you still need to keep the story moving forward, and I really do believe in that. The story needs to move forward in every episode in a substantial way, at least in one substantial way, and I hope that we'll still see that here, and I just really hope that whatever characters we'll end up spending time with will at least be contributing to the story and are not just a huge detour for no good reason. Uh, we'll see. I'll try to be as, you know, unbiased as I can, obviously still with that pretense in mind, but the last time Bryce Dallas Howard delivered something great, we'll see what we've got here. Okay, what ship is this? Is that Moff Giddy? Oh no! Uh oh. And we're unaware of any local warlords that required payment. No, that's Axe Wolves and Cosca Reeves. We are Mandalorian. Oh. And sadly, you're too late to hire us. You see, we've been commissioned to track you down, Captain Shuggoth. Wait, I want to see his armor. Did he get a change? This is an act of war. Yeah, he's got a new chest plate. Loyal as well. I won't go. Oh. We love each other. We've got a contract waiting for us on Blizzard 15. Sasha Banks saying she wasn't going to be in season I'm three. Go back to that Richard Palace. Come, my best friends. You can do this. All it takes is a few credits. <laughs> It's cool to see the other part, the, the other Mandalorian loyalists that were under Bo, aside from just Casca and Axe. It was always kind of awkward. Um, guns for hire, okay. I have a feeling this is a really strong start and it's gonna switch to some other characters and this is gonna go downhill fast. What is this? Okay, hello. Oh, didn't went along? Very cool. Where are we? This is in the trailer. It's quite a fleet. Axe Wolves is their leader now. Welcome to Pleasure 15, the Outer Rim's only remaining direct democracy. You've been assigned a docking slip. You will be guided on the assigned path. Engaging automated guidance. Uh oh. That's technology that can be used in Star Wars. That the best we had was tractor beams. Why have we not seen this done elsewhere? Why didn't the Empire take control of ships when they needed to? What? Okay, so this is not a flashback to the Old Republic or High Republic eras like some suspected. Do you grant permission to scan your chain code? Oh, cool. Is the scene on there? This is not a request. <laughs> Do not leave the Disney the, the, the Disney World monorail. Bob Iger is not asking. This is very CG heavy. Oh my God. This is an expensive location. I've never been here before. You think we're gonna have to blast our way out of here? <laughs> we'll find out. Oh boy. Join us. Oh no. Come. Everyone, special guests, Mandalorians. I hope you like secretions. <laughs> All right. Well, this is this is fun. <laughs> this is this is this is fun. I'm. This is cool. You were Imperial? He was. Plazio suffered greatly under Imperial rule. <laughs> Could I perhaps hold the baby, please? He doesn't take kindly to strangers. Ah! <gasps> oh! <laughs> so fast. You see, it was time for our planet. 
decided to move into a new area. Show our guests the view. It, this is feeling a little goofy, a little kind of like low budget you kind of problem. Yeah. Yes. Battle droids. It, it, what? It, it, it. Former battle droids. They've been rehabilitated for civic duty. Yo. They were. Obviously. Are we gonna see B1s? Mandalorian garrison outside your city walls. In fact, Plazer 15 would formally recognize Mandalore as a sovereign system and petition the New Republic to recognize it as such. Stockpile. Uh oh. Captured Imperial robotics scheduled to be scrapped. Oh god. Droid's pissed. Oh yeah, B1! Let's go! Oh no, not one of these from Boba Fett. <laughs> if we shut down the droids. Our citizens would know how to survive. Our society would collapse. Well, that's not good. What do you want from us? Cool elevator. Whoa. See what happens when you rely on droids. Are you taking this personally? Just pointing it out. <laughs> Let's just finish this so we can be on our way. That's great. I'm just loving that Bo-Katan is just casually a mainstay in the series. I don't care where we are, man. It's like, I'm, it, this is so cool. Never gets old for me. Yo, there's a B2! B2s! Which one of you is in charge? Yo. We Hello? They don't give a crap. This is going nowhere. Friend of Ugnat Quill, you will answer our questions and help us with our task. <laughs> have spoken. Nice. I've spoken. That's great. Thank you for your hospitality and for sharing your table with us. We were engaged to hunt down and eliminate the malfunctioning droids. Accusing the work of malfunctioning is an insult. Now, they've indicated that there's a likelihood that we'll have a look around. We really are in full side quest mode with this episode. I mean, we are just... I mean... Are those freaking super battle droids walking around? That is so cool! Oh my god! Hello? Battle droid since the Clone Wars. I have. Oh my god, dude. This is a restricted area. Hell yeah! You are to vacate immediately. We have a few questions. Show me your identification, please. The uh, certification is on file. Uh, I wouldn't do <laughs> that if I were you. Why is that? I thought they were just checked out. They were. Yeah. What are you doing? Then this shouldn't phase them. Uh, sir? <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, you excuse me, sir? <laughs> 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 huh? You should have left them alone. <laughs> Come on, man. This is cool. This is fun. Uh, uh, dude, I'm, I'm freaking watching Din Djarin and Bo-Katan chase live-action battle droids. Like, I'm down. This is awesome. And they're CG. They look great. Oh, my God. I love the location. It's so cool. This is giving me Ahsoka walkabout vibes. Well, hey, at, at least it's not shooting, right? It's, I mean... That's a, that's a plus. Nice, Bo. That's cool. I found a spark pad. And there's an address. Uh-oh. I am kind of glad that Bo is, is able to take her helmet off now and, and, and Katie Sackhoff is still able to perform. I was kind of worried she was going to have to keep, keep it on for the whole season. You kicking droids is really not helpful. <laughs> I figured out which one was malfunctioning, didn't I? Oh, God. <laughs> Droid Club? This is rad. If you don't start answering questions, I'll yank your memory circuit and dissect it back at the lab. Nobody leaves. Oh. The word. Din has got no patience. What are you doing? The New Republic would send them to scrap. But here on Plazir, they are given a second chance. That's why we need your help. We don't want to be replaced. We still have a lot to contribute. Wow. This is not what I was expecting. Hey, I've 
you've seen that droid? I almost stepped on it in person. Wow, it's so cool to see you again. That is not how it works. I probably shouldn't have said that. There is no selection of them. What are the chances that they're still active? Oh. Whoa. Oh my god. Nice. Those are the really bad kind of lasers. Those are serious. Those are freaking scary. They're still active. Let's see what I can find out. Yes, here we are. They were originally manufactured by the Techno Union. Oh no. Been in cold storage for ages. Commissioner Hellgate. Not Doc Brown. I never give up. I didn't give up to the corrupt republic. I didn't give up to the empire. And I won't give up to you. You're a separatist. Separatist is a pejorative term. Count Dooku was a visionary. Whoa. He was cut short in his prime by the Jedi enforcers. Whoa. That's cool. Politics. <laughs> was not expecting a Count Dooku reference like that. Okay, That's so cool. That for you, my lady. Her dress is so cool, by the way. I didn't get to say that earlier. You are now a knight of the ancient order of independent regencies. Of what? Go in peace, brave travelers. My lord, my lady. Thank you, skippable side quest people. They're going to follow you. I'm not their leader anymore. Interesting to see the doubt that Bo still has after kind of being given a new course by the armorer. That's a lot of gauntlets, man. There's the uh, the ship from season two that they took, the freighter. That's so awesome. Wow, Bo had a few more Mandos on her side than I thought. Is that Corky? Probably not. I'm now in command and grown quite fond of it. So Axe Wolves is an asshole. Then I challenge you. One warrior to another. Oh. Can we do this right now? Do you accept my challenge? I do. Big mistake. Din, toss her the dark saber and cut his head off like Previsla. One, I might add, who has not one drop of Mandalorian blood in his veins. Din Djarin took the creed and chose to walk the way. He is every bit the Mandalorian that they were. The ruler of Mandalore must possess the Dark Saber. Then she shall have it. Oh. Here we go. Don't give it to her. It didn't work out. It's a, it's, this it's, belongs to you. It's like a curse, right? That's what the problem... It's not a gift to be given. Yeah. No matter how well intended. Yeah. While exploring Mandalore, I was captured. And this blade was taken from me. Okay, they're doing this way. They're going Both this route. Tan rescued me and slayed my captor. She defeated the enemy that defeated me. Yep. Okay. This is so cool. Would it not belong to her? It would. Wow. Thank you, spider droid. No kidding. I return this blade to its rightful owner. Awesome! 
Mo finally gets the dark saber the right way. Let's go. Maybe now she gets the dark saber. Din rides the mythosaur, or she can ride the mythosaur too. There it is, Mo Katan with the dark saber. Nice. Nice! What a great evolution of Bryce Dallas Howard's debut episode in season two. I think it was her debut episode. I don't think she directed a season one episode. Um, to now go from introducing Bo-Katan to her rightfully possessing the Darksaber in the end. There was someone on my last reaction video that posed this exact theory that I actually really, I guess maybe I don't watch enough Star Wars YouTubers anymore, but I hadn't heard the theory before and it certainly made sense that the spider droid down in the mines of Mandalore had basically defeated Din Djarin and then she defeated it. So, I mean, for at that moment, the droid was technically the rightful owner of the Darksaber and then Bo-Katan defeated it. Um, all right, guys, so I was originally expecting something a lot worse than this. I mean, from what I had just heard loosely online, this sounded like the episode was going to be a total, absolute misery through and through, like season one, episode five. As much as I love Dave Filoni, that was uh, bottom of the barrel for his level of storytelling. I, I could not believe how bad that episode was, and I've never been able to watch it since. This was not that. This, I mean, I would argue is even better than The Passenger last season. This was really great. Um, okay, maybe I shouldn't say really great. It was very good. Okay, maybe not very good, but it was good. <laughs> it was really decent. It was decent. It was fun. It was colorful. Um, it did kind of feel like low-budget Disney Channel sci-fi storytelling, like something the Disney Channel would do, um, at times, when you were especially with the Royals. You know, I'm glad that Jack Black had some fun, um, his wife was cool, her CG dress was really awesome when it was, like, flared out in the back, and some, I just want to say, some outstanding costume work on all those Royals and the people in that room. I am really glad that the extras actually looked good and all made sense here, unlike the previous episode where it was just kind of a, a random group of Navarro citizens, whereas here the world actually felt populated and not like they just hired a bunch of extras to fill the stage or, you know, it actually felt alive and, and like there were a lot of people and not just uh, 20. <laughs> um, so I appreciated that. I appreciated the CG work on the planet. I appreciate it a lot in this episode. Obviously, I want to recognize my Clone Wars bias here. I mean, having grown up with the Clone Wars and it having a lifelong impact on me and uh, having gifted me my channel, my whole journey on the YouTube space across 15 years of my life, I watching Bo-Katan live action on screen as a mainstay is just, I mean, that kind of brings me up to a level 10 every time anyway. Uh, it's like watching Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka on screen, or Cad Bane, or Saw Gerrera. Whenever I get to see Clone Wars characters who I had always been told were just animated and would never matter and would never make it into live action, just being so casually on screen puts me at a 10 and then I only kind of come down from there, and especially if it's Bo-Katan or Ahsoka, these characters that I grew up with. That said, um, you know, also seeing live action battle droids again was amazing. I like the Ugnaughts too. They all looked like Nick Nolte's Quill, um, which I thought was strange. There was kind of no variety in their faces aside from like the hairstyles and stuff. I do want to also um, acknowledge that yes, this was a severe case of a freak of the week type story, a very, um, I mean, nothing story. It was cool. Uh, it was nice to kind of establish a new planet for the Mandalorians to visit. I will say I would rather them continue to visit here than Tatooine. I am so done with Tatooine, so hey, I, I'm just glad that we haven't really gone back there much. It could have been a lot worse. This could have been a lot worse. Now, I want to be also consistent here because I remember in season two, I was very pointed about this and I still am. And I said it at the start of this video, it's okay to do stuff like this to a degree, so long as the story moves forward in a substantial way. And here, the story really did move forward in substantial ways. I mean, big ways. The episode freaking concluded with Bo-Katan rightfully accepting the Darksaber after recognizing that she had actually won it 
the right way without even really thinking about it. Now, someone on my previous video, I might have mentioned, uh, posted a comment with this exact theory, and I just didn't, I thought that maybe that probably didn't count because it was a droid and not really a, but it did. And it's cool to see that come to light. I, um, well, I'll have to go back on the previous reaction and, and, and pin that to the, to the top of the comments because that theory wound up being correct. Um, so I also really like the Count Dooku reference and the Techno Union reference was fun. The side actors, like the, the, the lady investigating the droid, were, you know, not great, or, you know, um, it was the, 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 it wasn't the best acting uh, on, on, on display at all times here. Uh, Katie Sackhoff, though, really bringing her A-game, and, and, and she was she's just so consistently fantastic. She has just so naturally fit into the role, like a glove, the live-action version. It's just really outstanding. That said, now um, I also want to kind of acknowledge that The Mandalorian is only eight episodes long. Every season, right? We only get a new season once every two years. And I am really of the mind that when you only have eight episodes, and I said this last season in 2020, you really should not be wasting time. You only have eight episodes. I understand what people will say. Serialized storytelling. You need to get used to watching TV, and and this is normal, and this is this should be acceptable. And I agree to a point, so long as the story is moving forward, like it did here. So I'm satisfied, right? This is not a frog lady episode, even though it was cool to see your species in there again. The story actually did move forward in a big way here. So you cannot say that this episode did not contribute to the season. We just moved the story along in a major way. Okay, so this episode is not The Passenger. Um, it's not that season two episode, Frog Lady. They did some big stuff here. That said, the rest of the episode was just spent, you know, on a droid quest. But I also appreciated that it was a... Like, I thought that the way the, the droids were handled in this episode was a lot better than, like, L3 in Solo. L3 was just kind of weird, and it kind of didn't resonate or land, whereas these droids were, like, really honorable, and there was a story behind them and a reason and, and almost emotion for why they're worried about getting replaced after getting second chances after otherwise, you know, potentially being left to become scrap, because many of them are old Clone Wars-era droids, or they even predate the Clone Wars. Um, it was so cool to see... The, um, the the green uh, astromech server droid um, that was on set with us uh, for the Jabim sequences in the Obi-Wan show that I was privileged to be a part of. And yeah, I, I very nearly bumped into it, uh, one of its little extended arms. So I, I, I remember that one time. Um, and yeah. So anyway, now my disappointment does kind of lie in the fact that, okay, the season only got its direction very late in the game this time. Five episodes in. It was only about when we finally concretely knew where we were going, which is a little too late in the game when you only have eight episodes. But also, one episode was dedicated entirely to Dr. Pershing and Elia Kane, and then we didn't really know why. They really should have put the Moff Gideon, Carson Teva tag scene at the end of that episode instead, I think. And we don't know what's going on there. We only have two episodes left. We have now spent all this time on this random planet with this little droid quest, and that's fine. But now we only have two episodes left, and I would be surprised if this season winds up really, to me, feeling as strong as season two. Season two had more momentum, to be sure. Now, do you necessarily need momentum to tell a substantive story? Not necessarily, of course. But they're on limited time here, right? And that's kind of the big frustration. If you had, you know, 10 to 16 episodes, stuff like this would be great. You know, I mean, this would be great. Because, yeah, the case, I think, is certainly valid here. That this whole droid quest story was really kind of filler. This is a real clear-cut case for filler. I really do believe that. Um, much like The Passenger was in Season 2. But at the same time... They did move the story forward in a big, substantial way, which I really appreciated. And they gave us a great sequence with Axe Woes and Cosca Reeves and the remaining Mandalorian loyalists of bo fleet. So I am excited, right? But now we only have two more episodes. So in those two episodes, we're going to have to now 
find out where those tie interceptors came from. Someone's going to have to tame the Mythosaur. We're going to have to see Moff Gideon and break him out. What, what is he going to do in eight episodes? What, what is his story going to be in, or, or what is his story going to be in just the remaining two episodes? Obviously, the argument here can be made that we're moving into, you know, an eventual season four that John Favreau has already finished writing and they're going to start filming, you know, I'm sure uh, the end of this year. But season three has had a real structuring problem. It's, it's had a bit of a direction problem, like as far as this narrative and where it's going. Um, what I really did feel, though, throughout this episode was that Bryce Dallas Howard had a lot of fun. I think that really showed through. It really did. I really felt her directing style and kind of like her presence throughout the episode. And, and, and so that was, that was nice. And that was fun. Um, and it really seems like she had fun. It's just the Mandalorian is, is in a bit more need of direction and, and bigger storytelling than just sending Din Djarin and, and Bo-Katan on a droid quest for an entire episode when we only have eight episodes to work with. So yeah, the argument of this could be, this is serialized storytelling and this is acceptable and this is how it should go. It's like, yeah, but you only have eight episodes here. And maybe I don't necessarily agree that serialized storytelling always necessarily serves these characters the best. That being said, I'd love to hear what you guys think down below. I had some great theories last time that wound up being very true here, which I was very surprised by. So I'd like to really like to hear what you thought. I think this is going to be a controversial episode forever, but I certainly do not think it was the worst of the series. That said, I'll see you next time, hopefully for a better episode that I guess fast tracks a lot of the bigger storytelling aspects that still remain untended to. We'll see what chapter 23 brings, but for now, this hasn't been quite as much the way this time, but May the Force be with you. All right. Bye-bye.